Hey, what's up everyone? Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com, and in this video, we're going to do a little bit of refactoring uh, for our HTTP service, as well as how we're uh, downloading the data. We have a kind of a problem right now in that, how do we get our data over to our actual React component? The data is all coming through in our, in our service over here, but we need to get it to our component. And remember, web requests are asynchronous. Uh, if, I mean, by default, if, and that's the, nat that's the native way to do it. You don't want to freeze your app waiting for a request to come in. And so because they're asynchronous, we don't know when the response is going to come back. And so how do we get, let our component know that, hey, we've got new data, and we want to send it to the app? Okay, so let's do a little bit of refactoring uh, to work with something called uh, JavaScript promises, okay, or ES6 promises. And a promise is kind of what it sounds like. You say, I promise I'm going to send you back a rejection or... Uh, a result of some kind, no matter what. And then the app or the class or whatever you're using can then act accordingly. And that's probably a little confusing, so let's see how it works. So in our HTTP service, what we're doing right here is we were just doing a console.log on the response, okay? Uh, instead, what we want to do is we want to work with a promise. So how we're going to do that is in the get products function, we're going to say var promise equals new promise, okay, and we're going to resolve or reject. So again, this is just a function. This is a class here. We're creating a new class called promise, and uh, remember, this is a function, okay? Again, I know it's if, you, if you're not familiar with ES6, you know, this would be the equivalent of saying function, resolve, reject, okay? We're just doing it the ES6 way here, so these are the two parameters that come in, resolve, reject, and then here is the block and the inside, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to move the fetch inside of the promise, okay? Like so. So we're going to fetch, go to this URL, and then on the then, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to call resolve res.json, or response.json, excuse me. So used to working with APIs here. Uh, where we just call it res. I just wanted to spell it out so it makes more sense. Response.json. Okay, and there's one more key a piece to this here. Okay, so we're creating this promise, but what we want to actually do here is return the promise. Okay, and remember, asynchronous is a very important principle to understand. Okay, so uh, to, to show order of operations, okay, one, that's going to be called first. Okay, this is going to be called here. But then guess what? This is probably going to be the second thing that's called. Okay, it's not this, all right? It's, well, let me back up here. This will be the second thing that's called here, is this fetch. All right, this will be the third thing that's called. And then this will actually be the fourth thing that's called in most cases. And I say most cases because um, the request is usually never as fast as the browser can process. So it's usually always behind. Um, and so basically, uh, look at this here. We create a promise and we do the response. At this point, it's making an asynchronous request. We don't know when it's going to come back. So what we do is return, we return the promise immediately back to whoever is asking for it. That way, they can hold on to the promise and at some later point in time, uh, that promise will be fulfilled. Um, what's a good example? Like if you have a mortgage on a home, at least that's what we call them here in the United States. Okay, what happens is, uh, you know, you hold, um, you, you know, even mortgage to a house, but a bank, you know, holds, you know, the, uh, the interest on it, or basically until you're done paying off, you know, they kind of hold on to it. And so they're, you're promising that you're going to pay at some point in time, they will deliver you the deed to the, the house or on a vehicle, similar, similar type of principle. Something's happening. You're holding on to a promise or a note. And at some later point in time, uh, you will receive uh, what you're waiting for, and um, you know, there's probably a bunch of examples, uh, and it's hard to see unless we actually see it running here, but this is important to know. The one, the two, the three, and the four. The four is last, and therefore we need to return something before the request is done. Okay, I'm going to take these off here. Okay, so we're resolving response.json, and this is good. Uh, we're good here now. But there's something we need to do in our app.js. Okay, we need to handle things a little bit differently. And so what I want to do is I want to create a new function here. Oh my goodness. 
uh, we need, I need to configure this sometime. Like when you press return, where does it land? Things like that. Um, tab size, one, two, trip me out. I just, it's like not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> ah! All right. Uh, just so you, just so you all know, the reason why um, I actually have all my uh, web development configured in Atom, and the reason why I'm using brackets is because uh, brackets has the live server uh, for basic HTML, and we've been using it in a lot of these videos, so we're continuing on and using it. And also, brackets uh, is really nice because it has more elegant code completion. Um, but Atom, you should highly consider using Atom uh, because it's it's very elegant and very uh, very much lightweight and does a lot of cool things like being able to drag and drop files into folders and stuff. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function called load data. All right. And again, that's our special ES6 syntax here. So it's a function with no parameters. All right. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to kind of move this get products uh, into the load data function here. Okay. And so we're going to say HTTP dot get products. Okay, and then we're going to call something special here, dot then, okay, and I'll explain that here. And then we're also going to have an error, okay. Okay, what in the what -a is going on here? Okay, so if we go back to our HTTP service, remember how I said we're immediately going to return a promise. So the function gets called. The request starts, but we immediately return a promise back over here. And so the get products uh, is returning a promise to us. Okay. So at this point right here, when get products is called right after these parentheses, it's throwing back to us that promise and it's holding up. We're holding onto it in memory. Okay. And this dot then is how you fulfill a promise. You say, okay, when the, re when the request is done, then, okay, if it's successful, call this function. If it's not successful, call this function. Remember, these are functions here, okay? And you can, you don't need the parentheses if it's just one parameter, okay? So this is equivalent of saying function and then the parentheses putting data or error. And so, okay, if I was to, um, over here, if I was to instead call, for some reason to call reject, okay? And pass in an error, you know, like this, you suck. <laughs> like if I was to call reject on this right here, the dot then, would instead call the error, and this error is just a variable name. I'm calling it error. Would be equal to you suck. <laughs> so we are we aren't actually throwing an error, okay? But if I did reject the promise, uh, that's that's what this would be equal to, okay? Because I just specified it here. You suck. And on the resolve, I'm actually passing in the JSON. Does it matter what you put in there? No. I could have put a string here. Blah blah. And when I come back to app.js, the data. This is just a variable name. I, call, I what I called it. I could call this anything. Data would be equal to blah blah, okay, or blah bal. Uh, but it's not. It's equal to the response that JSON. So the promise goes back immediately, and then when the request is done, okay, fetch kind of has its own little promise here that it's using, right? This dot then, and then it, we we resolve the promise. And so if we if we go back to the uh, app.js, when this is called, if it's successful, okay. This is the data that we're getting from the server. Uh, I could have called it products. Um, that, that might make more sense, right? I could have said products. And the error is whatever uh, we put in there. Okay. So let's make sure this actually works. So that our, make sure our refactor works. So we're going to go ahead and a console.log. And we're going to console.log the products. Okay. Let's make sure in our HTTP service that our console.log is gone, which it is. Okay, so we should still see a printout, um, but it's just been moved around. And there's one more thing we need to do. Okay, with React, uh, we need to bind our ES6 functions. Okay, the special syntax here it requires us to do something called bind, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna bind uh, these functions to this class that we're working in. And uh, if you want any more. Uh, insights, uh, go do a search online for uh, ES6 bind as well as React ES6 bind. And there's a, quite a bit of info here. I think it's a little bit out of the scope. 
uh, of this conversation here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot load data is equal to this dot load data dot bind this. I know it sounds funky, right? But uh, when you're working with React and ES6, okay, we're going to say bind functions. Any functions you use in here need to have need to be bound, okay? So we're saying this dot load data. So this function here, let's go ahead and bind it to this, okay? has to be done for your functions if you want access to them. That's just the way that it is, okay? So we're binding it, and then what I want to do is actually just call the function. So we can say this dot load data and call that function here. So when the uh, props load, the app's going to load. Um, make sure you save your file here. Let's go to our browser. And what I want to do is make sure that it worked, and actually already did. It's right here. It reloaded and it worked. So it's still working. We've got our three objects. We are su we've successfully refactored and we've successfully implemented promises. Now, I don't expect you to completely understand all this. This is getting very complex, and uh, this this takes lots of time to get down. And uh, I'm explaining it as in the most basic form that it can possibly go. So just know it may take some time to figure all this out. There's there's lots of well arrows and all this stuff, and if you look at it, it can get crazy. Um, but you just take thing one thing at a time and rewatch the videos to understand and uh, do your research on, on the internet. Again, don't go and just take things for granted. Don't be like, oh, bind whatever, um, and then not, not do it or not register it in your brain because when you're building your own app, you may forget about it, and then you're like, why is this not working? And you may be just flipping out and because you never internalized it, you, you forgot that you needed to bind your functions. And uh, so it's really important that you go look these things up when I say go look them up. Uh, but we've successfully implemented promises and so now the difference is before we didn't have our data available to us in app.js it was all coming in the HTTP service but with promises we're able to forward that data over here to our to our app which is really cool so let's go ahead and call this video done a lot to take in uh, take it in and then let, let's move on and forward <laughs>